Dear friends, good afternoon. Thank you for gathering here in this large hall. And I hope that you can hear what I'm saying. So wave your hand if you can hear me, because uh, I used to, uh, to be at uh, another hall before that, and the acoustics there will, uh, was not uh, quite inspiring. But here, I hope everything will be fine. My name is Roman Karmanev. I'm general director of the Presidential Fund for Cultural Initiatives. At this a uh, fund has been existing only for two months. Before that, I was the uh, first uh, deputy general director of uh, Komsomolsk Pravda Group. And for four years, um, we uh, have been promoting the fishing industry. And uh, we have been trying um, to promote it to understand how it can be done. And four years ago, oh, three years ago, sorry, at the Fishery Forum, we presented the survey of Tom, and it confirmed uh, our idea that um, in the uh, um, nearest future, our children, I have three children, for example, so they will forget what uh, fish looks like, and uh, they will learn. Uh, they will know that fish exist, but uh, they will uh, not be able to cook, uh, to clean fish, and you have to have some interest towards it. And this survey uh, confirmed uh, the fact, and uh, the situation has been changing because it was uh, uh, three years ago, and uh, in 10 years, Many of us will uh, have to change our um, qualification and to retrain because uh, the demand on the domestic market will be low. Fortunately, maybe not so fortunately for the fishing industry, uh, the pandemic has affected this situation. And we will watch one uh, video. And one participant says that uh, his taste uh, has changed uh, because of the COVID. Uh, he can no longer eat meat, but he likes fish. I wouldn't like our children to adapt to the consumption of uh, fish and start eating fish because of that. But there are some voluntary methods that can lead people to eat fish and seafood. And here at our round table, we will discuss this topic. And I'd like to uh, emphasize the one question that I'd like to ask to all the participants. Uh, for four years, we have been talking about the need for promoting the fishery industry. We have to develop the domestic market, but uh, we can't agree uh, who uh, will be the head of this uh, movement and who will be doing this job. And uh, we have to understand whether we need such an actor and um, what's, uh, who will be in charge of it. Probably the state, the government, and uh, the senator should be speaking about it. Unfortunately, he's, no, uh, he's not with us yet. But there is an idea in the Federation Council of the Russian Federation. They have uh, the ideas and the programs for uh, promoting um, the fishery development. And uh, four years ago, we were already talking about the state program program. And like uh, in the past, we used uh, to have this uh, book about the healthy uh, lifestyle and healthy food. Uh, but this is what uh, comes down uh, to us uh, vertically from schools and universities. And now I'd like to introduce our guests. Uh, today, they have taken their seats in the Tribune. Garegin Mitin, Council Secretary for from Fish Union. Uh, Maria Litovka uh, from uh, Sevastopol, Yekaterina Astakhova, General Director from Nakhodka Retail Chain, uh, Daria Bochkarova, expert from All Russia People's uh, Front. This is a person who is uh, in charge of protecting uh, the um, consumers' uh, rights. And uh, I can say that I personally invited Daria to take part in this roundtable because uh, before that I have not met uh, uh, such a responsible uh, person that fights for the rights of consumer, Polina 
uh, Kirova, Director for Development from Ripset Fish Supermarket Chain. Um, those participants that uh, have taken part in four meetings of us. Uh, Vladimir Garela from Agama Group, uh, Peter Boss, General Director from A. Esperson, Mr. Uh, Boss has been with us for a long period of time as well, and Andrei Mikhailevich, the head of uh, uh, the Federal Agency for Fisheries, the head of investment, and uh, uh, he will join us on stage, and uh, uh, Sergei Mitin, uh, Senior Vice Chairman from the Federation Council Committee on Agriculture. Please take your uh, seat, your chair, and uh, something is being said without microphone. We will have time. We know each other well. I noticed that you are with us. We have been communicating with you for many um, years. Let's preserve this uh, tradition of uh, having Q&A session after the reports are delivered. Let's respect our speakers, our participants. Not so many of them are here with us. The time is limited. So I kindly ask each speaker to deliver his speech within five minutes. Uh, Sergei Giramasimovic, uh, representing uh, Federation Council Committee on Agriculture and Food Policy and Environmental Management. Uh, I've said a few words about uh, the agenda that we will be discussing today and um, the central question that I'd like us to focus on and find the answer. Who has to be responsible for promoting fish products so that uh, our uh, children should not lose this skill and um, should eat fish like we do now. I know that you have prepared your report. Thank you very much, dear colleagues. I'd like to start my speech with uh, extending my gratitude um, to the organizers and uh, welcoming all the participants. It is not the first time uh, that we have taken part in it, and uh, we have listened to excellent reports that have been delivered, and um, the delay was due to the additional discussion of some bullet points of the plenary session. And uh, of course, the topic of our um, today's roundtable is quite relevant, and um, the main task was uh, to discuss um, the uh, catch of the fish resources. Three years ago, we focused on this item, and we've had the legislative basis for that, the so-called investment quarters in exchange for investment, and uh, it has uh, brought fruit, and uh, we have uh, seen very uh, good uh, informative stands of uh, the United Shipbuilding Corporation summing up the results from 2009 up to 2019. Um, there have been um, built five uh, fishing vessels, and over the last five years, state-of-the-art uh, vessels uh, have been uh, built, and uh, now, overall, we have uh, uh, 54 uh, vessels that will be built by 2024, and we've visited almost all shipbuilding facilities. The competencies are getting back to our shipbuilding manufacturers. So this is an ongoing process, and uh, today's meeting is uh, dedicated to the uh, fish processing, but what can be done afterwards, after the processing? And today, ministers and uh, the head of the federal agency uh, for fisheries has mentioned that uh, 20 processing plants have been um, built, and this quarter for in exchange for investment um, stipulated that um, Processing plants uh, will, will would be uh, built, and 20 of them have been already uh, constructed. And um, today we have been talking about the development in the Barents Sea, Barents Sea, and new vessels have been uh, introduced. 
and um, we are working on that. But we are still lagging behind, and we see that in some indicators, and the Federal Agency for Fisheries has provided these numbers. 4.3 million tons with a catch of uh, uh, 5.1 million tons. And if we take into consideration the expert, we can say that we are lagging behind in this uh, uh, processing process. And if we have a look at the, the structure of uh, experts, we see that it is shifted uh, towards uh, uh, fresh, unprocessed uh, fish and seafood. And uh, uh, today we will check this uh, indicator. Rossi's Bank has given it to us that we uh, export fresh uh, fish for uh, 1.5 um, a million uh, to China, and uh, it uh, says a lot. It's a global problem, and um, we have to go back to the origins to understand it, and probably it's quite primitive. What we know about uh, uh, fish and what has uh, happened uh, with uh, some popularity that we used to have a few years ago, and um, who is promoting which fish we should eat, but to understand the basic to understand the origins, we have to uh, consider the economic essence. And uh, from the legislative point of view, we do not uh, have this category. And in the unified classifiers of uh, economic activities, we do not have this uh, specific uh, category for fish. And with Rekt of Kaliningrad um, Fishing University, we discussed uh, this topic. And he's uh, quite concerned about it when we mentioned this. Uh, topic, uh, we found this uh, very good ally that um, promised us to provide us with uh, this inf information. And as a lawmaker, uh, we will, uh, I can promise you that we will um, study this matter and uh, um, will include specific types of fish that will be differentiated from uh, meat types and it will give us uh, the understanding of statistics so that we understand which state's uh, support measures should be provided in order to help with the development of um, uh, the industry and all of this uh, shows us that if we a want, and it is quite evident from the reports provided by the FAO, we have enormous resources in uh, Russia. And if we set um, the right tasks of um, investment into the sector and will develop this uh, uh, industry and uh, to uh, develop the research vessels to build them up to 2030, uh, we uh, may be already among the leading uh, powers around the world and the difference uh, in percentage and uh, the difference in the share of uh, aquaculture, if we uh, compare that with the global trends, what, will, what was mentioned from, uh, what was mentioned by Ilya Vasilievich, we have to understand that globally it's about 5 to 6 percent, it's in Russia, and about 50 percent, this is the global indicator for the international development and FAO says that uh, this indicator will be prevailing in uh, fish resources and uh, it means that we have to deal with two things, the economic substantiation and uh, the uh, provision of uh, state support measures. This is the first task and the second task to provide the population with uh, the necessary data about the um, consumption demand, uh, consuming 23 kilos on average per person. It's a huge difference if we compare Buratina, Kalmykia from six to eight kilos per year. And in coastal regions, like uh, the Far East in Arhangelsk, it's from 30 to 40 per person. So it's a huge difference across the country. And to bridge 
this gap, we need to have the processed products that can be delivered uh, from a port, from coastal regions to other remote regions that do not have these resources. And here we come to the following conclusion as a lawmaker, also my colleagues. Uh, I'm glad that it has been confirmed by the specialists of uh, the agency for uh, fisheries that we need to adopt uh, a new legislation on fish processing. We are working on that. And if it happens, uh, and we will try our best to make it happen, it will uh, be a significant contribution into the development, into the support of um, the fishery industry. And I started with this uh, um, items related to um, the fish products, and uh, we will have to go back uh, to um, saying that uh, we need to uh, hold uh, new fishery forums, uh, new exhibitions, uh, new events uh, in uh, different constituent entities of the Russian Federation. What can be done in order to improve um, their healthy life? lifestyle of um, the population and the thoughts and ideas that we will be exchanging during this uh, roundtable uh, will help us to have um, a clearer view of what can be uh, done in order to deliver the fishery products. Thank you very much. Let's support the statements made uh, with, uh, with an applaud. I have just one question. And uh, we will have a Q&A session, and I will give you floor. You will do the talking, and I assure you, we will give a floor to you. Just one question for us to promote f fish consumption. We need uh, some kind of uh, center that will do the brainstorming, that uh, will be developing the strategy to promote consumption. Who should uh, determine? the way, uh, modus operandi, of uh, determining where the fish fairs should be and where geographically. Do we need a new some kind of state cooperation and uh, w where should it be? Should it be under the Federal Agency of Fisheries or should the fishing companies uh, chip in and uh, make some kind of entity. You know, they ask uh, questions like that and uh, at different levels, both the legislators and uh, at the governmental level. But uh, I must say that we do have already two bodies. Uh, one is the Ministry of Agriculture, and they are responsible for the policies. And uh, we have federal agency for fisheries. It's an executive uh, branch. And uh, I don't think we need some kind of new entity, because these two uh, organizations uh, have uh, shown, have demonstrated uh, that they have uh, good uh, staff working over there, and they can cope with the task. As far as the public organizations, NGOs are concerned, we do have some, like uh, Fish Union. It, uh, it is an association that includes some 20 stakeholders, and uh, there are other uh, associations and the unions. These are NGOs, and uh, they represent the community. They can address the issues. If you need uh, regulations or some kind of law, we can uh, do something to develop it and uh, enact it. OK, got you. And uh, thanks uh, for your talk. And uh, we will let you go. And uh, if you want to, to ask a personal question, you can g buttonhole uh, Mr. Mitin and, and uh, the speaker from the audience uh, from the floor does not have a microphone, so the interpreter cannot uh, interpret, uh, uh, does not hear the questions from the floor. OK, thanks uh, a lot. You're excused. Thank you. And uh, some four years ago, we presented the results, uh, the outputs uh, of uh, the study. The results of the study were not that great, but uh, time is uh, 
a, a run-in, uh, and uh, uh, the, the situation changes, and uh, I would like to give floor to the Council Secretary of the Fish uh, Union, Mr. Mitten, for, for us, for him to tell us what the new statistics is. So I represent uh, the Fish Union. It's a uh, dynamically developing associations of uh, the major stakeholders uh, in uh, fish processing and fish uh, wholesales. We have uh, an, uh, quite a vigorous uh, Murmansk subsidiary and uh, they uh, present, uh, they are represented by the organizations that are engaged in uh, the coastal uh, fishing. The fish consumption in this uh, country is one of the strategical issues on the agenda of the fish union uh, on the whole and individual members uh, and uh, for the period between 22-25 one of the priorities of activity is outreaching to the community to consume fish. The Fish Union, together with the X5, X5 retail group uh, and the platformer forecast uh, center, made a study on what shall we do to increase the fish product consumption. However, the study shows that the first that the consumption of fish leaves much to be desired. Uh, of course, uh, fish is part of the diet of 85% of the adult population. However, uh, its uh, place uh, in uh, the diet is uh, quite modest. Six out of 10 people, consumers, eat fish less than once per week. The others do not eat it at all. And then the uh, fish consumption is uh, gr dropping in Russia. This situation is not specific for Russia only. And the experts claim that the share of fish consumption of the protein has been growing from 12.1 in 1961 till 13.9 in eight, 1989. Then it starts uh, going down. 2012, it's 11.7%. Uh, At that, the consumption of other protein is growing. Talking about the consumption of fish in kgs, uh, FAO estimates that the developing countries uh, for the period between 60 one to 18 is uh, 26.4 uh, in 14. Th then it started going down, and, and in 2020, it is uh, just slightly more than 20. So, back to Russia. The analysts uh, state that uh, there are two consumption models uh, in uh, Russia. One is uh, Soviet-related for the people older than 65 and uh, for the 30th age group. For both groups, the model is uh, characterized by trying to eat uh, fish. And uh, the, well, what the difference is that uh, the type of fish for the contemporary consumption model the uh, respondents uh, consume convenience and semi-products of 61%. Soviet consumption model consumes uh, fresh and frozen. And uh, the high-speed uh, way of uh, life uh, characterizes the gr age group of, of those who are 30, and they just uh, do not have much time to pre-cook uh, food. And uh, so that's why when there is shortage of time, the convenience is a priority. And uh, there is a growing consumption for ready-to-use fish. The youth uh, exclude fish from their diet. 15% do not eat it at all. The representatives of the younger youngsters say that they, they don't like the taste. That's what the 50% of those who do not eat it say. 
and the, the 27% not how, know how to cook it, and 15% do not think that the choice is good. The latest uh, reason is that the, the youngsters do not know how to choose a right. 80 and 89 uh, Soviet type consumers uh, do eat uh, food. And at that, uh, they eat it not less than uh, once per week, and only 29 of the Soviet-type consumers. It goes without saying that when analyzing the data, we should uh, take into consideration the uh, 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 how the type of the consumption developed. At the Soviet time, there was uh, no freedom of choice. So there, 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 there were not so, so many products uh, to eat. And uh, now uh, there is a better choice and freedom of choice. Uh, and the uh, consumption now is uh, uh, natural. The generation changed, the style, the way of life uh, changed, and the, the preferences changed as well. And it is okay. The changes uh, affect all of the endeavors of life, not only consumption. consumption. And uh, then we should uh, talk about the adaptation of the industry to meet the changing styles and ways. It's necessary to take into consideration the have-nots of this country and uh, the uh, food processors uh, are then lagging behind the competitors uh, for the time being. I hope uh, the situation will change. However, the respondents, when talking about the low level of consumptions, the note on the high costs between 75 and 80 percent of those uh, say so. Poor quality between 37 and 44 percent of the respondents say so. And uh, poor choice. And both uh, consumption models uh, have the same percentage, 36 of the respondents. Of course, the latest uh, statement is quite surprising because uh, there are uh, drones of uh, fish uh, and uh, at the, the storage uh, facilities, it just uh, doesn't uh, reach uh, the restaurants, uh, the kitchens, and stores. As far as the quality of uh, the fish and seafood is concerned, it's hard not to agree to this uh, statement, especially it refers to the frozen food. It's uh, drab and uh, sometimes it is over frozen as a result uh, of uh, the uh, breach of the technologies. Uh, 46 uh, of uh, the buyers uh, of the stores claim that the quality of the fish and fish products uh, got worse. And uh, sometimes uh, it is uh, the culture of the stores uh, that uh, is uh, that does not uh, the improve the situation, but uh, aggravates it because the prices, the price tags are all mixed up. The products, the packs are in heaps, and it's no good. But uh, it is so concerted efforts are needed. At the same time, we should note that uh, it is mostly the older generation that uh, know how to take their picks and they are more critical with respect to the quality of the fish salad. The younger generation know less about choosing fish and that's why they buy it less. And uh, it uh, takes uh, business with uh, the communities uh, to uh, outreach and uh, to champion the knowledge, the booklets, leaflets, uh, and uh, like uh, at the time of the Soviet Union, there were postcards that were published uh, dedicated to the fish dishes. And uh, I think that kind uh, of tradition could uh, be recovered and uh, giving advice on how to cook fish. What about the price? We should understand that uh, Russia is inbuilt into the global market and the prices are growing globally. And uh, fish, wild fish, will never be cheap. 
uh, the population in the world is growing, the stock uh, does not catch up, is lagging behind the growth of population, and uh, so we could complement it with the aquaculture and the share in the Russian fishery industry is, uh, of the aquaculture is uh, still low and uh, the price uh, should uh, then match the quality. In this case, uh, the gap will not be that striking. And uh, B2C, B2G uh, surveys uh, show that uh, there is a high interest displayed for fish and the importance of consuming fish is recognized by 80% of the respondents. At that, we should understand that uh, the most important driver, mid and uh, long term, will be younger generations, and the attitude of youngsters uh, will be critically important for all the production and uh, sales, retail sales of fish. That's uh, why the requirements, the interests of the youngers uh, should be a priority to have a tipping point to overcome the negative trend and uh, to fill the sales of sale, of fish sale with the wind of change. The following measures are needed. B2C will approve. It's your presentation. Sorry. It's a democracy. You choose what you need. As far as B2C communication is concerned, not much over here. No, not many lines, but still it is necessary. Awareness is uh, necessary and uh, it provides for different forms. It could be social advertising, banners, or talking about uh, the nutrient uh, value, and just uh, something like slogans. Eat fish as much as you can. One minute. Could you please fit into this? We, we press for time. OK, postcards, as I mentioned. Another thing, it is uh, shaping the culture of consumption by uh, introducing the fish menu in the kindergarten preschool and uh, B2G. We should uh, have uh, the dedicated center for strategic uh, planning of uh, fish consumption and uh, there is no a targeted strategy for the development of the fish processing. Such a, a program does, is non-existent. It is necessary to provide incentives for production and sales of fish. And uh, favorable conditions are needed for the facilities uh, in the densely population areas, uh, aquaculture development in the central part of uh, Russia, uh, training and capacity building uh, for the fish processing industry and uh, uh, support uh, and underpinning for the fish processing industry, development uh, of uh, the uh, industry standards, B2B, inter-industry center of uh, competencies for the development of the market and the B2C segment production to provide availability of the fish uh, products, uh, development of the uh, intelligence uh, and information, looking for new formats of the products and uh, pr expansion of the SAMI uh, products. Sustainable uh, growth is uh, needed uh, for the development uh, of the non-food industry, like cosmetics, uh, etc. Uh, interaction of uh, science, retail, and the production to uh, automate uh, the routine processes.
Yes, I'm already concluding my speech. And uh, we would like to say that uh, the prospects uh, do not look very promising, but uh, uh, neither are they negative. We see certain trends in the consumption trend, and we can reverse it jointly uh, by the civil society, business, and government. And uh, sorry for not being within the time limit. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, while I was listening to you, I've come up with um, a following, the following thought. Uh, many of you have children, about five, let's say 15 years, uh, who has children of this age. And I imagine that today, I come to this exhibition, expo, the stand with uh, uh, my son of 10 years old, and uh, we are moving around, and I tell him that uh, this is the beauty around us, the crab, and the next uh, uh, stand, um, once again, we see some redfish, some crabs, and um, probably he will be bored maybe at the first stand already and, uh, to catch the attention of um, a child, the Nexpo. It's an impressive exhibition. Nevertheless, we lack one stand uh, fish products for children so that the participants that were getting ready for this uh, expo organizers should ask them what you will put into it and uh, how will you catch the attention of a child and um, we can bring school children here and uh, so that they uh, visit the expo and um, then to ask focus groups about what they liked here. And now we face the following situation. It's a round table and uh, to allow myself to um, say a few words as well because uh, we are talking about some consumers not thinking that some of these consumers are our uh, children. We have to uh, reverse in some kind our mindset uh, thinking about catching their attention. It's not only the problem that we face in Russia. In Japan the consumption is also dropping because fast food is what uh, uh, catches the eye of children like fast food and they are struggling to catch the attention of a younger generation and we are not uh, fighting for it and uh, we have not had this transition we are not thinking about it sorry sorry for that I apologize for uh, my small speech now I'd like to ask Maria who uh, has uh, who looked like um, a person who has had some positive uh, results, maybe in Sevastopol, the situation is uh, uh, different. Um, people uh, living uh, near the sea are more optimistic and probably they have found some uh, ways out of this uh, situation. Maria Alexandrovna, uh, please tell us some positive uh, uh, thoughts and ideas. First of all, I'd like to thank you for the opportunity to speak at this roundtable. And like many of you, this is the first time I'm here. And uh, probably you were looking at me thinking that uh, um, this woman does uh, eat fish. I'd like to say a few words about Sevastopol and uh, why I can share my experience our experience. So fishery cluster of Sevastopol, that was uh, the project that was launched last year and uh, that was uh, by done by the decree of the governor. Why we thought it could be uh, developed and implemented? It's a historic uh, uh, industry for our region and I talked to some older generation fishermen and with nostal uh, they have nostalgic memories 
of the Soviet time when they uh, caught fish and they sold it um, right there in the embankment. And uh, Sevastopol uh, is uh, the largest region in terms of uh, their catch. And when I mentioned that, uh, it's, uh, it turns out that um, not everybody knows about that. And uh, the catch is growing every year. 2020 has been the most successful year over the last five years. And uh, aquaculture, we have had uh, subsidies in this uh, for this sector, and uh, um, we increased the uh, output in aquaculture by 230 uh, percent, uh, repair and uh, um, shipbuilding and the replenishment of the fleet is the strategic goal uh, for our region and I'm responsible for the development of this industry and I'm, I have been set to two tasks. So we established a cluster and we united the efforts of 30 participants and we identified the areas of interaction within this cluster and uh, the key goal was to develop uh, this trend of uh, having the largest uh, uh, catch, but also to develop their processing, because uh, now the processing takes place in the uh, Crimea, and the added value comes uh, goes uh, away to other constituent entities. We would like to um, reverse this trend, uh, and we are at risk um, constituent entities, but as for fish uh, fairs, um, probably you saw uh, such uh, um, exhibitions like Mercados in uh, Spain. We do not have such events, and there was no even prospect of organizing that in the future. Um, later on, I will elaborate on that. So all of this uh, uh, cluster should uh, have an impact on each individual consumer. So it's a very complicated and um, complex slide. So it's about consumer of the first and the second level. Of course, today we are talking about the second level consumer, uh, tourists and uh, um, the special facilities like the street foods, uh, what uh, should appear in each of the regions and who will have to do that. We are quite confident that the authorities should be responsible, should be in charge of it. So they should be interested in the development of the businesses, but also interested in um, the benefit of all their citizens who will be consuming this production. So what uh, have we done? already some general figures in the cluster. We are talking more about consumers. But I'd like to note that uh, thanks to this cluster approach, our manufacturers um, got their certificates for their products. Almost in all the stores, we have uh, the certificates. Before that, it was uh, impossible because of the sanctions. And uh, uh, some agreements have been signed and are being signed at this forum as well. And we funded some events that help us to expand the uh, opportunities for consumers from other regions. But if we come, let's go back to our region and uh, to differentiate. It's very good that uh, the previous speaker uh, told us about two approaches to deal with consumers, old-fashioned, the Soviet approach and the modern approach. And uh, our task, uh, next week we will launch this project, Social Price, this is the name, uh, made in Sevastopol. We will have low price for fish with a very wide uh, list, um, not all the uh, list is represented, or mussels, for example, um, and uh, some people who wouldn't like to cook uh, fish and uh, some seafood. Uh, we uh, have uh, one of the uh, old uh, plants, and um, uh, this is canned fish. We are bringing uh, these uh, chains together. Next week, we will sign agreements, and uh, the manufacturers will um, uh, offer special low prices. Uh, you know about the project, though we have not um, said anything so far. That's for Vladivostok. They are doing something similar. Yes. So next week, we will launch it on a large scale, and uh, we will make uh, it public, uh, announcing all the terms and conditions. 
And the uh, wine, what about wine? Yes, it's, uh, it is planned for the future. I see here the glasses of wine, that's why I asked. Um, this is an important uh, aspect. So um, what do we have uh, in Sevastopol, uh, the largest catch in the um, basin of uh, this uh, sea and the best wines uh, as well? We would like to invite you to visit uh, uh, Sevastopol and our region. Uh, Last uh, um, yesterday, I visited a wine expo, and uh, there I told uh, the participants about uh, the wine route. But let's get back to the fish topic. Our goal is um, to make it possible and affordable for all uh, citizens to buy fish, because when uh, it costs uh, 700 rubles, it's not an, quite an affordable price. And of course, um, tourists who come to our region would like to, to taste food, uh, but uh, it's uh, quite expensive, and mussels should be affordable uh, as well, and not less than in uh, European countries uh, where you can taste any, um, any mussel with um, the, some potatoes um, at uh, almost any uh, place. It's not only the Russian product, and our task uh, is to make it possible for a consumer to buy it. Uh, clear rules of the game for all the shareholders so that we understand what they expect from us. And uh, we will expand our expo and fair networks uh, to provide more uh, platforms for manufacturers, almost free of uh, uh, charge for our um, fish, uh, fishermen and uh, processors, because we have different companies, different kinds, but the task is to make it uh, affordable and uh, accessible as well, and to um, ensure the high quality. And another tool for consumer, it's a more state-of-the-art story, it's a touristic goal. Why do we call it touristic? because we talk about the ready-made products and those uh, markets or mercados. Uh, I lived, I used to live in Spain, that's why I call it like this. We support you, let's uh, applaud to our speaker these markets with mussels and wine. A few days ago, the, one of the participants of the forum uh, Lachta Bay opened um, their stand, uh, their bar at the airport, uh, and uh, Marcel Sumia is uh, telling the story about the mussels uh, and um, showing his uh, expertise. Uh, it's similar to the wine story. It is consuming um, fish or aquaculture, and uh, it is one of the directions that we should be working on and uh, ready-made mussels that we I see the already cooked mussels, and our goal is to have more and more uh, sites um, like this with more sources where you can uh, buy the seafood that uh, is already pre-cooked. It's a long road, it's a long journey, and we have to move gradually, step by step. We should be uh, moving towards um, achieving this goal, and uh, the expectations are quite quite different, and as for statistics, uh, it's true because the expectations do differ when we take different generations, whether they are ready to eat fish and uh, buy uh, seafood. So this was a brief overview. Thank you very much for your attention. Uh, very brief. Thank you indeed. I have a question. So which category are you aiming at? From which age, uh, if we speak about younger generation, when they can afford buying, or at what age? If we talk about children, what you mentioned, it's responsibility of uh, adults what uh, food um, they give to them. And here I understand that if a 
parent does not show his child uh, the diverse food, uh, diverse diet. It's not about a, ch a child of 10 to 15 or teenager or 15 years. Uh, they will not buy it because they do not even know the price and where they can purchase it. But as for tourists, touristic story. It's about uh, um, 25 to 30 years. This is the category we are aiming at with a glass of wine, for example. We would like to taste something uh, different and if we have an interesting uh, packaging because uh, packaging is important nowadays and uh, it is becoming popular, it is becoming fashionable and this story about mussels with wine, it is already popular but we have to expand those tools. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. We have to speed it up. Uh, I'm sorry I have a plane, so I have to leave. To I have to uh, go to Simferopol and then to Sevastopol. Thank you very much. Thank you for your contribution. Uh, Yekaterina Yurievna, a few years ago, we discussed uh, uh, the possibility of uh, opening a chain where you can buy something and uh, then all, uh, also eat something like a cafe, but uh, there was a discussion, the dispute about uh, the fact that it was too expensive, uh, nobody will uh, buy it there. But uh, now I have this uh, great opportunity to, talk, uh, to ask you about uh, the Nahotka retail uh, chain. So what about the results? Um, uh, how does population perceive it and uh, um, how you will move forward? Unfortunately, we have only five minutes because we will have uh, Peter to deliver his uh, report. I had uh, my presentation for seven minutes. Okay, I will make it six minutes. When I'm asked uh, why, have, uh, why we have uh, uh, come to this idea of uh, uh, opening the retail chain of uh, uh, fish um, um, shops, and uh, I'm becoming a wholesale um, wholesaler in uh, this um, uh, chain because all my colleagues and uh, friends would like to get uh, uh, high quality fish and uh, caviar for New Year's uh, celebration. And if we did not belong to the fishery industry, uh, where would be would we be buying it. It's, there are only two solutions, uh, some remote market and remote shops, uh, and there are too many people there. It is too remote, and it is not uh, popular among uh, people. And uh, also, there are some problems with quality in terms of ultra fresh. And the second option, the market with the um, high price. And I'm concerned uh, always uh, about the food um, safety and food security. You don't know whether it fell on the floor and uh, which uh, hands cleaned it and so on. So when we thought about implementing this project, we carried out some marketing uh, research and I will share with you the results. GFK, Ramir and the Dekel group participated in this um, a survey. So we asked this question, why do Russians consume and eat fish and seafood? Uh, fish is viewed as an alternative um, to meat and a wider range of uh, diets. Also, uh, it's a very good related product. For example, a company uh, beer or a glass of wine, uh, food, seafood, mussels, and uh, it is quite easy to cook. It. But the main drivers is um, the love towards uh, fish, and uh, unfortunately, uh, all the generation tends to like um, fish and seafood. Unfortunately, um, younger generation do not uh, like this, does not like this uh, uh, type of food so much. Uh, would you like to eat um, 
fish and seafood more often, and 56% answered yes, if it's not so remote from our houses, and if it is, it has a higher quality. Uh, why a fish is not so affordable? I will have to interrupt you. Uh, you are telling us um, how you have come to this idea of opening these stores, this uh, uh, retail chain, but uh, let's uh, speak about uh, maybe some conclusions. So what have we learned? We have learned about the following. People need more high quality fish, and we were surprised to see that uh, uh, people prefer ultra-fresh and frozen products uh, are not so popular among citizens. Uh, and um, if it is high quality, then they tend to buy it. What is also important for people who come to our stores, though that the sh fish shells uh, looks uh, good and um, there is a wide range, it's not an ocean store uh, without um, uh, some um, unrepresentable uh, qualities, and uh, then uh, they tend to purchase it more often, and the consumer um, sometimes does not know anything about fish, so it's a kind of uh, impulsive uh, uh, purchase, and I made an experience experiment yesterday, and I can tell you that uh, consumer does not know anything about the fish and differentiates uh, a cod from pollock, uh, and um, uh, they do not understand uh, what uh, this fish is about, and when we start telling them uh, what is the difference and why aquaculture fish is not so bad, then when we provide them with this explanation, then they buy it. So uh, it's about the education that should be provided by the state. So what is needed uh, then uh, to explain it uh, to the buyers in the shop? And Correct, and another thing, uh, people do not like to cook fish at home. They don't like uh, cleaning it or splitting it, removing the scales. That's why we have uh, taken the approach ready to eat, uh, ready to cook, uh, ready to eat, so as there won't be that much uh, smelly cooking process at home. As far as the younger generation is concerned, uh, you might uh, not disagree with me, but uh, we have realized that the younger generation will not have fish if it is not fast food. Bad as it is, but uh, it is true. What they have uh, for their meals uh, at uh, school, it is uh, the fish that is not tasty. And it, uh, and only the things that look good, that look fresh, uh, and if it is fried, and uh, it if, uh, if it is something like fish and chips, and if it is if it is looks unhealthy, then it's good. Yes, and uh, if it is uh, some kind of entertainment, like shown in the cartoons, then it will be cool, it will be great. That's the message we should give it to the youths. The, uh, in Japan, they have uh, introduced uh, uh, fish into Maka, and then they, they did uh, manage uh, to reach out uh, to the kids. I apologize for interrupting you, but uh, we will have to rush, and uh, I had a discussion with Daria uh, before the session, and uh, the shocking thing that she has told me, it is the parents that uh, send a letter to take fish uh, off the menu at school, children do not like it, it's no good, or at least it should be not more than once uh, per week. And so that's the stance, that's the position of some of the parents, and uh, it's uh, some infernal evil for school children. Why so? And uh, where are we? Where will we be if that's the approach? I would like to thank Roman for the invitation. And uh, I think the operators will be applauding me that uh, at, the, at the last we did manage uh, to discuss uh, the food in schools. Let's uh, 
then talk what is uh, happening with uh, the diet of uh, school children. Take 2019, people realize uh, what it is uh, free of charge, uh, hot food at schools. It will not have to be fast food. It, it, it means high quality and uh, safe. And uh, most of you have raised hands uh, having children between uh, 10 and 15. And uh, you understand that the key thing about uh, nutrition is it's, uh, it being healthy. And uh, uh, indeed, I uh, had a discussion with uh, Roman, and we received a letter. And there is a social uh, welfare uh, nutrition. And uh, the directors of the school wrote a letter. And uh, what uh, their message is uh, that uh, let's uh, have, uh, a, a, and by the way, there is a cycle of a menu, it is 12 days, and uh, uh, the fish uh, food is included uh, six times uh, in the cycle of 12 days. And the directors of the school are saying that uh, let's have it at least once in a cycle or once uh, in a month. And uh, what should the uh, operator do? How should the operators work with the feedback from the parents if the parents are against? And how should we explain it to the parents that food is good for you, to, it's nutritional? And I'm mixing with the parents every, virtually every day, and I'm mixing with the directors. And we have come to terms that the feeding operators will uh, have the following things. Uh, they would uh, present uh, the fish dish differently. You remember that uh, uh, we used uh, to have it uh, fried, and it is uh, forbidden to fry fish for children. And uh, uh, you have to understand that it will be tasty if the cook is really professional, if the raw materials are great, and if the cooking utensils are great. So we refer to raw materials uh, quality quite a lot. Taking Saint, we are not talking about uh, Saint Petersburg uh, only, and uh, we are aware about the situation in the whole of uh, Russia. And uh, you must know that uh, there are state uh, contracts uh, now that are meant for the schools. And I have uh, some figures uh, here to illustrate it, uh, that uh, in St. Petersburg, the saving for the social welfare feeding in St. Petersburg only is 1.5 billion rubles. Uh, and uh, they are see they are reducing the expenses for schools and uh, kindergartens these are big big this is big money and uh, those who are engaged in the supplying the feed raw materials you have to understand that uh, if it's high quality it uh, cannot be possibly cheap that's why all the operators and the suppliers uh, intend to increase uh, the production monitoring and, and uh, testing. And if the parents say, no, it's not tasty, that's not uh, enough in us. It's only the laboratory testing that uh, can be the proof and evidence whether it is safe or not. And uh, uh, because we are responsible for the high quality and the safety. There are 6,000 uh, tons of fish consumed in St. Petersburg for social welfare feeding. And uh, based on the daily rate day of uh, consumption, 200,000 tons uh, annually, taking into consideration both consuming fish uh, at uh, home and uh, at the school. You cannot uh, exclude fish. You can change the mindset. And it is up to us to change the attitude uh, to 
instill it into the children the necessity to eat uh, food. And if we are responsible for the healthy feeding, we are responsible for uh, eating habits. We teach children to be polite and uh, to uh, greet uh, one another. Why can't we teach uh, them to have uh, fish? Fish should not be away from the dishes of the children. That's the good uh, uh, conclusion and uh, great talk. And uh, I raise uh, my hand in support uh, of uh, having fish uh, at uh, school. Who is in favor of that? Raise your hands. Okay, we should do something about it. And uh, we have uh, Ms. Paulina Kirova. She is uh, development uh, director. And uh, well, I, I have called her director general. It is uh, from the Ribset supermarkets. And uh, lo uh, two years ago, she has been uh, talking that it's necessary, to, it's necessary to convince people, it's necessary to educate people, and you should talk to them, and you should talk them, do the sales talk. So four years have passed. What? change. That's what I'm going to say. Four years have passed. Here we are again and uh, we are talking that it's necessary to promote fish consumption and uh, every one of those people are doing uh, much to do that and uh, every year we still talking this uh, on this subject. Do you know how we are promoting it? We get in touch with the consumers and we tell them have your f your fish it's great that's the level of communication at the domestic market and uh, but well that's uh, just uh, emotions uh, running wild uh, if you had approached me and tell me eat your fish i would stop doing that okay anyway there are positive changes and uh, the quality is better the assortment is uh, wider, new formats. Uh, it's uh, like uh, uh, the market, re uh, the fish restaurants, the fish bars, uh, not uh, only in the major cities, but uh, in uh, the whole of the country. And uh, the packaging is better, much better compact uh, than it was uh, four years uh, ago and uh, it uh, could be 200 grams a pack 400 and uh, there is a choice and the producers uh, are making uh, value products uh, high value products uh, and uh, in-depth uh, processing and uh, both uh, the producers and uh, retailers uh, are delivering but uh, we have not been observing any changes in the mindset and uh, unfortunately we will not see any changes in the mindset if uh, we are not uh, united and take what the situation is after the uh, Chinese uh, market was uh, closed we should uh, face uh, than the domestic market. What would happen if next time uh, will China close the market for some other uh, uh, fish uh, products? And what uh, we have to deal with uh, the pseudo-educated uh, consumers, and uh, I, would, uh, I would like to touch upon the three myths, and I uh, uh, sometimes uh, face that uh, well, the uh, uh, cool down uh, and uh, fish is good, but not frozen. And then caviar should be packed only in the Far East. I'm not going to uh, have caviar if caviar if it has been canned in uh, Moscow region. That's another myth. And uh, if uh, some people think uh, something about the frozen fish, they would say, I need uh, uh, the fish with the shock frozen without glazing. And uh, if they have, uh, that's what I uh, call pseudo-educated, if they have learned something about the new technology, they insist on that. 
And sometimes uh, the buyers uh, say, is that, uh, say, if that's uh, Atlantic salmon? Yes, it is. Well, I need common salmon. That's the level of education of uh, the buyers. And uh, I hear that kind of statement uh, all the time when I attend the stores. And uh, the consumers are not aware about the pricing policy. They do not understand why the Amur uh, Pollock is uh, different in price uh, to the Far East. They don't understand uh, what kind of smelt could be and wh what, what are the different types of mullet. And uh, if they uh, see the same name, uh, and they don't understand why the price of the same name price, the, the, sh the same name fish should be different. So promotion, uh, attraction, to, uh, things to the youngsters uh, are solvable. How we should solve these issues? We should, should stop relying on the regulators, but uh, we should unite our, our efforts. We should uh, have some kind of uh, council, stewardship council, to promote uh, the fish at the Russian market, dealing with the issues of tax breaks, and uh, then uh, awareness campaigns for the consumers and uh, advertisement uh, should, shouldn't be just plain eat your fish. It should be something more sophisticated. And uh, then, of course, it is uh, necessary to have some labels uh, of uh, quality, like uh, similar to the Italian DOP. That's about it. And that's what I call upon you to do. Great, nice uh, proposal, specific and to the point. We should uh, get united indeed. Vladimir, you have an opportunity to respond and, uh, to, and provide your feedback to what was uh, stated and how did you manage uh, to enter the chains and uh, how different it is uh, to what was uh, happening some 10, 5, 10 years ago. Five minutes to you. I uh, even have uh, a presentation. But anyway, Agama, uh, it is a company, is a processing company. And uh, let me describe what's the current situation at the market from the point of view of the processors. We do not uh, produce, we buy fish both in uh, Russia and abroad, we process it. And uh, we sell it uh, as an agama, the bay of plenty. It is uh, filet, shrimp, and seafood. And uh, my observations are proved uh, by what uh, are the deliverables of Platforma. There are two models of consumption, the conventional, the traditional. and. Uh, the uh, contemporary and uh, the uh, contemporary is uh, pushing the traditional out. The traditional consumption model is aware about uh, how healthy the sea food and fish is and uh, the, those uh, who abide by it are prepared uh, to spend a lot of time of cooking it at home. And uh, the market has uh, adapted to such a model and uh, there are products at the market that uh, meet the requirements of uh, such uh, a consumer. There are high quality fillets. The only disadvantage, the only drawback is price. The contemporary consumption model, and uh, it is mostly a younger generation that uh, abide by it. They do not think about how healthy it is. Convenience is uh, at the is the most important thing. They do not want to spend too much food. What is important for them is uh, ready to eat dishes. And uh, there are no products at the market that would uh, meet that uh, kind of requirements. There are snacks. There are low quality things, uh, but uh, not uh, good, not sufficient enough. What shall we do about it? So do you know? It's uh, You're intriguing us. Do you know what shall we shall do? Of course I do. First about the price. What shall we do about the price? The market uh, is uh, there and uh, uh, it is 
the uh, actors uh, cannot change the situation with the price. Take us, for example. We buy it uh, from the catches. Uh, we buy even imported goods. So we process it. Uh, we s haul it to the retailers. Uh, we have been doing it for quite some time. We are uh, more or less uh, efficient. And uh, the profitability is uh, not that high. And I am sure that the situation is no different with the other processors. So for what shall we do about price? Then only the state can introduce some kind of uh, tools. And some of the tools are being used, like uh, the investment uh, quotas uh, framework to remove uh, the some links uh, from the chain of uh, custody to by building the state of the art uh, production facilities had uh, the regulator wished it they would add uh, some kind of uh, uh, fees duties and uh, taxes uh, to untie or to separate uh, the domestic uh, resources uh, from the global prices and uh, where there is a wish there is a way we had the regulator be willing that uh, it uh, could have done so on the whole the state the regulator as it was uh, noted by the platformer a survey inside the chain of custody all the actors uh, behave rationally, both the catchers, the retail, and the, the consumers. They do all the things right, but then on the whole, the price is high and the consumption is lower. And now speaking about the second question, it's more interesting. You have 30 seconds. 30 seconds for this question. Okay. So how can we attract the attention of a younger generation? The situation is completely different. The barrier is convenience, not the price. And uh, it is a barrier not only for the market, not so much about the market, but uh, it is uh, a barrier in the mindset of manufacturers. So a manufacturer thinks the traditional way, the fillet, and uh, they think about fillet, but they have to make a step forward and to strengthen uh, their marketing and uh, to implement innovations to work on R&D. And manufacturers have to do that in order to change the situation and to adjust uh, with uh, the necessary offer to consumers uh, to be in line with uh, the requirements of the younger generation. I'd like to give the floor to Mr. Peter Boss. Uh, I've waited for your speech for a long period of time. So please uh, react to what you have uh, um, listened to. We have uh, five minutes to uh, sum it up. I will try to do a brief. Uh, over the last two years, because of the pandemic, we see a chaos not only in the logistics but also the production facilities, and uh, it will not be possible uh, to um, process and uh, to eat fish because of the problems with the China. Uh, and we will have to renew uh, supplies and uh, to uh, provide the necessary resources. And what will happen in the future? Um, the blocks of uh, Pollux, they cost, uh, the price is uh, 10 to uh, 20 uh, percent higher, and uh, our market cannot afford buying it. And um, at, if we had similar prices on the domestic market, if we compare that with the foreign market, we will uh, not have any Pollock on our market. And uh, it will remain like this for the next 10 years. But the demand has uh, changed on the domestic market. Uh, personally, I would like uh, to have a fillet in my kitchen because nobody would be able to afford buying this fillet. And the parent um, company, the manufacturer, understands its responsibility uh, before the society of Russia. I personally think that uh, it's a huge problem. And uh, 
uh, unprocessed food that is provided to the population, so responsibility uh, uh, is not uh, uh, there. The fishery uh, companies are using their resources and um, they do not comply with their responsibility because uh, uh, they pay low uh, taxes uh, and um, they have to be responsible. We are all Russian, right? Why then we support uh, uh, foreign countries and foreign people? Of course, we, we would like to earn money. Everybody wants that. But uh, we have to give it back 3 to 5 percent of overall catch. And processing uh, should be done in the domestic market because it would uh, guarantee um, the uh, sale and uh, it uh, will be possible to have ho uh, cod and uh, pollock in all supermarkets. And uh, what is even more important, it will be a high quality uh, fish. And today we already see a huge shift. Uh, in um, the quality of uh, processed uh, fish, and we should be proud of it. And uh, here in this hall, I see the representatives of uh, large fishing companies who have made a great contribution and invested uh, a lot into the building of a new trawler fleet, and we can be proud of it indeed. Simultaneously with the in-depth uh, processing at trawler vessels, we go out of this uh, um, price category, and the average uh, income will not um, allow people to buy it. They will not be able to afford uh, buying this uh, fish. And uh, as, a, as a result, uh, it, the quality will be dropping and decreasing and coastal plants uh, have uh, uh, major adva advantages. They are closer to the market. It's not a secret that we need uh, more processing uh, facilities in order to cater for the needs of the market and to provide it with a, a high quality processed uh, fish. You have one minute left. And um, I should also say that plants uh, should be flexible and should move in line with the uh, demand uh, of the market. Thank you, Peter. Sorry. So as I see it, I will tell you about it. I see that uh, fish products on the Russian market, we need to, uh, in order to achieve that, we need to unite the efforts of all the stakeholders, and we have to be on the same page. The officials of the ministry, they are in, Mo in Moscow, they are quite remote from the reality, far away from it, but we should be on the same page. So thank you for your attention. Peter, thank you very much, a very good speech. But let's get back from Peter to the beginning, to Andrei Gennadievich, uh, who is uh, representing this reality that is very far from you. Andrei Gennadievich, uh, let's sum up the results of the session. Uh, as Gav said, you are the happy one. So what is to be done? Thank you, Roman. Thank you, dear colleagues. Uh, reports uh, are quite interesting, as always. I participated as a part of an audience last time, and I can recall this interesting video. And uh, we talked about investment quarters and about implementation of the project. Uh, Ten years ago, we started talking about it. Uh, and five years ago, we launched it. And we have some interim results. And we will be moving forward. And uh, when we talk about who will consume, who will eat fish in 15 years, we have to strike the balance between two things. What, uh, uh, where will we um, get this fish from? Uh, because uh, the resources will still be the same. Uh, the catch is about 2.5 million, and um, a, la a large part of it is exported. But uh, um, 
And now the supply is uh, increasing. Two processing plants have been commissioned at, at the pl plenary session. Um, we have um, uh, increased their production three times of krill, for example. And we say that the resource is there, and we have the material basis, and uh, the first part of the balance is here. It's about 15 to 20 years of work that is necessary. And the second story, who will be promoting it? And all the speakers were talking about it. And uh, you asked Sergei Gerasimovich, and we closely work with uh, him. There is a ministry and the agency. I should say the following. Uh, we need uh, an autonomous, maybe some NGOs, the regulating agency, regulating or organization, maybe uh, not necessarily on the platform of the state uh, because uh, each organization is uh, unique and each product can be interesting for a consumer and uh, all of you who are present here uh, who are selling the products like Agama uh, retail chains they are represented quite well on the market but as for individual products uh, they are quite decent and dear colleagues I think that we should uh, unite uh, efforts and uh, we have to be optimistic about it uh, and uh, let's uh, uh, let's start putting that into practice because uh, almost uh, five years have already passed. Andrei um, Gennadievich, thank you very much. Concluding our session, I'd like to say that the most important thing I've uh, listened to today, I've heard today, we do not have the product for younger generation. Let's not be talking only about the promotion, but about creating and offering younger generation a product. Um, as uh, we were struggling against uh, alcohol, for example, but it were, wine was mentioned in two reports uh, today. Well, let's t uh, let's um, think about children and let's put forward our proposal. And so that at the next uh, Global Fishery Forum, we will have this uh, stand uh, for uh, children and we can uh, resolve this matter with our colleagues. So summing up, um, our discussion. The companies are interested in uh, uh, jointly promoting, and if we do not do that together, then in 5, 10, 15 years, we will not have any consumers for fish and seafood products. So let's um, get together let's unite our efforts and uh, this dialogue is uh, limited and restricted in the framework of this round table but i have uh, many questions uh, left and i'm moderator on stage and uh, in life and i know you personally the speakers today and uh, you those of you who are present in the audience uh, let's get um, ready for the next year uh, my name is roman karmanov you can find me in instagram in Facebook, you can uh, message me, um, direct, send me a direct message, and we can coordinate um, and uh, organize uh, a specific roundtable and um, speak about what can be done the upcoming year, and then at the next uh, Global Fishery Forum, we will get together and discuss uh, these issues. I'd like to uh, thank our speakers and uh, the audience, and I'd like to thank the forum and organizers for the opportunity uh, to hold this roundtable. Thank you very much, dear friends.